హలో ఎవ్రీ వన్ వెల్కమ్ టు ద వీడియో లెక్చర్ ఆన్ కోవిడ్ నైన్టీన్ ఐ హ్యావ్ మేడ్ దిస్ వీడియో ఇన్ సింపుల్ టర్మ్ సో దట్ ఇట్ కుడ్ బి అండర్స్టుడ్ బై ఎవ్రీ వన్ ఇన్ దిస్ వీడియో ఐఎమ్ గోయింగ్ టు ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ అబౌట్ వాట్ ఈస్ కోవిడ్ నైన్టీన్ ద సిమ్టమ్స్ ఆఫ్ కోవిడ్ నైన్టీన్ ద వైరస్ స్ట్రక్చర్ అండ్ ఇట్స్ లైఫ్ సైకిల్ ద డ్రగ్స్ అండ్ వ్యాక్సిన్స్ కమింగ్ అప్ అండ్ ఫైనలీ ద మిత్ బస్టర్స్ లెట్స్ బిగిన్ Now, COVID-19 means coronavirus disease 2019. Corona, the word means crown. When you observe this virus under an electron microscope, the surface appears as crown. Hence, it is named as coronavirus. In fact, corona is a family of virus. It has got so many viruses like SARS, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. SARS affected the mankind in 2002 and it has resulted in around 850 deaths all over the world sars is also named as sars cov 1 that means sars belongs to coronavirus and it is the first class to cause respiratory distress in human beings now after that mers is there middle east respiratory syndrome it affected mankind in 2012 it also has caused around 750 deaths all over the world now after that some of the common flu and cold is also caused by coronavirus families at least 15 to 30% of common cold flu is caused by coronaviruses now right now our subject of interest is covid this covid 19 started in 2019 hence it is non, known as covid 19 now till now there are around 7.5 lakh deaths are reported and it's still going on now this one is also known as sars cov 2 that means This is very similar to SARS coronavirus but this is a new one hence the number is given as 2 because of its newness it is also known as novel coronavirus you can see this picture the coronavirus interchangeably called as coronavirus SARS cov2 as well as covid19 this is about covid19 moving further covid19 symptoms there are so many symptoms of covid19 are there but the majority of the main symptoms are fever loss of taste or smell dry cough and fatigue fatigue means extreme weakness so these are all the major signs and symptoms of covid 19 other symptoms are also there but these are majority of people will suffer with this kind of symptoms now the covid 19 will attaches to a human cell receptor known as angiotensin converting enzyme to receptor the virus binds with the these receptors and gets into the cell and causes damages to that cells now these receptors are abundantly present in nose hence the the primary point of attachment is in nose hence the nose is known as ground zero for covid-19 it it is rich in these receptors once it gets inside the cells it it damages the cells hence the loss of sense of smell which is known as anosmia will be there this is the primary symptom of covid-19 56% of the people also reported loss of taste sense now after that it gets into throat where it results in sore throat and dry cough nowadays congestion and runny nose is also become a common sign of covid-19 after that blood clots and stroke is rare but it is life threatening symptom hence people need to be aware of these symptoms now in case of children covid 19 is very mild in children in very rare cases it causes severe inflammatory response the common signs of covid 19 in children are lethargy confusion sick too sick to eat or drink they develop a blue skin they have trouble in breathing they will have chest pain they also show diarrhea and decreased urination as i told you it is mild in children in rare cases they show symptoms which requires hospitalization now moving further let us see how sars cov2 affects human body now the infection it used to be thought that due to droplets the infection spreads nowadays the world health organization has confirmed it is because of aerosols now only the difference is particle size if that particle size is greater than 5 micron those are known as droplets if the particle size is less than 5 microns they are known as aerosols the problem with aerosols is they are very minute particles they can spread for longer distances hence wearing of mask is very important to avoid contracting covid-19 
Now, the primary site is it gets through the nose or through the oral cavity. Once it gets inside, it affects lungs. In lungs, it, it kills the cells and damages tissue. Lungs are the major organs which are involved in oxygen intake. So, when lungs are getting affected, oxygen intake will get decreased. The condition is known as hypoxia. In fact, COVID causes a condition called as silent hypoxia. That means oxygen saturation levels in the blood goes down without showing prominent signs and symptoms. The oxygen saturation in human beings should be in the range of 96 to 100%. This can be diagnosed by using pulse oximeter. So all of us should have this pulse oximeter to check our oxygen saturation level. When this level falls down 90%, they need ventilation or external support for respiration. Now, after that, the COVID also causes this inflammation and cytokine release. This is nothing but hyperimmune response. In certain individuals, the immune response will be very hyper. It results in a condition called as cytokine storm. Cytokines are immune mediators. Because of this one, hyperimmune inflammation occurs and that may result in death of a subject. So, mortality or death rate is because of two major things. One, they are damaging lungs, which may lead to death, which will cause pneumonia and death. The second one, hyperimmune response. The other organs affected are blood vessels, heart, kidney and digestive tract. Next, let us see the anatomy of coronavirus. Now, coronavirus, this is a single virus particle. Now, it has got four important proteins, envelope protein, membrane protein, spike protein, nucleocapsid protein. All of them are present on the surface. Underneath you have a lipid membrane and this nucleocapsid protein covers the genetic material that is RNA. So it has got simple things, four proteins, a lipid membrane and then an RNA. Now out of this, the important protein is spike protein. Spike protein is the one which binds with ACE2 receptors on human cells. So this protein binds with ACE2 receptor and get access inside the cell. This is how it infects a human cell. Now look at this lipid membrane. Lipid membrane is this one. This is covering the entire virus cell. A simple soap solution can break down this lipid membrane. Hence, washing our hands with soap is very important because the simple washing will kill all the uh, variants which are present on our hands. Next, let us see the coronavirus life cycle. Now look at this. This is a SARS-CoV-2 or coronavirus organism. It gets inside human cells with the help of ACE2 receptor as well as TMP RS2 enzyme. Once it gets inside the cell, it releases its RNA. Now the RNA will be synthesizing viral related proteins and the proteins will also synthesize more copies of RNA. Now once the virus has prepared its viral proteins and RNA, it is packed with the help of human cells as new viruses. Now these proteins are nothing but the structural membrane proteins we have discussed, this envelope, membrane, spike and nucleocapsid protein. All these four, four proteins are prepared here as well as RNA is prepared here. So at the expense of our own cell, it is making its own variants and all of them will get released out of the cell. Each and every virus can infect a cell and from the cell, 100 to 1000 variants will be synthesized and they are released outside of the cell. Once they are getting out of the cell, they will break the cell and cause cell death. The other important thing, this RNA which is prepared, some of the RNA will be left over in the blood circulation and that is present in our sputum. So the virus diagnostic test, there are two tests are there, RT-PCR test and antibody test. In RT-PCR test from the sputum, RNA is collected and this RNA is converted to DNA with the help of an enzyme known as reverse transcriptase. Once DNA is made, again DNA copies are multiplied with the help of a process called polymerase chain reaction. So once these DNA copies are collected, they are compared with known genetic material of coronavirus and it is confirmed whether someone has got that infection or not. Because they are using these two enzymes, these two techniques, the method is called as RT-PCR, reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction test. This is the test which will confirm whether someone has got corona infection or not. Now the next test is antibody test or serological test. 
what happens is whenever a virus infection is there body will increases the levels of antibodies which will fight with this virus now these antibodies are are tested to find out whether coronavirus is present inside the body or not there are certain problems with this technique it takes at least 1 to 2 weeks to make antibodies the other thing these antibodies are not specific they are non specific all corona family viruses will give a positive test with this one you have sars test sars is there and mers is there and covid is there all of them belong to corona family all of them will give a positive test so it could give a false negative test so the reliable test is rt pcr test moving further <clears throat> once any drug or a vaccine is produced it has to undergo clinical trials to know its safety and efficacy it is carried out by doing preclinical test in preclinical test the drug or a vaccine is used on animals animals like mice and monkeys are used in that animals the drug is test for its efficacy or its safety once it is confirmed it is gets into human clinical trials wherein in the phase 1 it is carried out with 20 to 80 participants here also the safety is assessed and then whether the drug or vaccine can treat the virus infection can be checked <coughs> excuse me it is known as efficacy now once this is done once again both of them are established it moves to phase 2 wherein it is carried on 100 to 300 participants now in this phase the people are divided into groups they are divided into children group and then old age group and the drug is tested whether it is acting similarly on both the groups this this is carried out to determine the doses of the drug or vaccine after this the drug enters in phase 3 phase 3 is carried on large population it ranges in thousands in phase 3 all the groups are tested for its efficacy once it is proven that safety and efficacy then it gets approval to get into market even after getting into the market it undergoes a trial called as phase 4 wherein the drug or vaccine is checked for its adverse effects if after getting into the market it is showing any adverse effect it is removed from the market or banned from the market this is a brief thing about clinical trials <clears throat> now certain drugs are proposed to treat covid-19 these drugs are also known as repurposed drugs now understand this term repurposed drugs means say all these drugs are right now used to control this covid infection chloroquine was an anti malarial drug it is already approved all the clinical trials are carried out and the major purpose was to treat malaria now repurposed means this anti malarial drug is also tried to treat covid the purpose is changed hence it is known as repurposed the advantage with all these drugs is all of them are in the market they don't need any clinical trials approval now chloroquine will inhibit the golgi function and it will not allow the formation of this variants lopinavir ritonavir are used to treat hiv infection the job of this drug is to inhibit the viral protein synthesis remdesivir favipiravir again both of them are antiviral drugs which were used to treat ebola now it is tried on this covid and they will inhibit the synthesis of covid rna now tocilizumab sarlizumab both of them are anti inflammatory drugs i told you already one of the effect of virus is it increases immune reaction and increases inflammation in such cases these drugs are used to treat inflammation recently steroid steroids are also used to control this inflammation like cortisol now next <clears throat> vaccines now vaccines will act in a certain manner how vaccine acts is whatever the organism is causing infection that organism is taken and it is either killed or inactivated or a particular part of that organism is introduced in human body once it is introduced in human body human body will increases an immune response to that particular organism because that organism is either killed inactivated or a particular part it will not cause a full blown infection but body is developing a full blown immune response so this is how all the vaccines will work you can see there are a lot of vaccine platforms are there non replicating viral vector that means a particular part is introduced into human body with the help of a vector 
inactivated all the virus is inactivated rna is a part of a particular virus again the vector is used protein unit a part of virus so all these vaccines are developed by using these particular parts now all these vaccines which are given are in phase 3 clinical trials so all of them in advanced states but the vaccine from university of oxford and astrazeneca is in very advanced state the world health organization is hoping that the vaccine may come in early 2021 now this one is also partnered with indian institute serum institute of india now serum institute of india is preparing so many batches of these vaccines and they are doing clinical trials of phase 2 and phase 3 in india now the remaining thing like this sinovac wuhan beijing and cancino all of them are from china out of this this cancino is in phase 3 but it is approved for limited use in china they are they are using it on army people it is approved now covaxin is from india bharat biotech it is in collaboration with indian council of medical research it is in phase 2 clinical trials so these are all the major uh, vaccines and this one moderna one is from united states of america all of them are in phase 3 except this covaxin which is in phase 2 the earliest possible vaccine could be at in the early times of 2021 now recently there is a sensational news from russia about sputnik 5 they have renamed their vaccine as sputnik 5 now this sputnik 5 the problem with this sputnik 5 is it has not cleared phase 3 clinical trials and it is approved to use in human beings that is the reason why world health organization and some of the countries are objecting for the use on human beings because the safety and efficacy is not established but russians are using it on human beings next one now i just wanted to explain some of the myth busters there are a lot of myths going around regarding coronavirus now see this page i have adopted from world health organization site there are certain facts you need to keep in mind the facts are hydroxychloroquine does not have clinical benefits in treating covid-19 people are holding this drug hoping that it will cure covid-19 no it does not have any clinical benefits in treating covid-19 second one there are no medicines that can prevent or treat covid-19 so you cannot have any medicine to treat or prevent covid now next fact antibiotics cannot prevent or treat covid-19 antibiotics will be acting against bacteria now covid is because of virus you cannot kill a virus using an antibiotic most of the uh, hospitals are preferring azithromycin which is used to treat bacterial infection it could not act on covid now next one being able to hold your breath for 10 or 15 seconds without coughing does not mean you are free from covid 19 there are so many whatsapp messages about it if you can hold your breath for 10 seconds people say after 10 seconds if you don't cough you don't have corona no that is not true that's a myth next one eating garlic does not prevent covid 9 it is a fact you see gar garlic may have antimicrobial properties but it cannot treat covid 19 this is a fact next the sp <laughs> spraying and introducing bleach or disinfectant into your body will not protect against covid 19 one of the president suggested that taking disinfectant into your body may treat covid no that is not true the fact is it cannot protect you against covid 19 With this I'll conclude my video on COVID-19. Thank you for watching this video.